Okay, good evening, good afternoon. Um, thank you for your attendance. What I intend to do is um, give you some background around the investigation uh, and, and some information around that, and then I'll take any questions that you, uh, you wish to ask. Um, first of all, I want to start by saying, really, uh, this, is a, oh, this was a very complicated uh, investigation for many reasons. Uh, it presented um, many challenges from an investigative point of view and, and from a number of other issues that arose and um, a number of difficult decisions uh, clearly arose from this as well and um, some difficult decisions had to be taken uh, along the way and um, some of those decisions and the outcomes of those decisions um, weren't always popular and I accept that um, but nonetheless that doesn't mean to say difficult decisions um, shouldn't or don't need to be taken. Um, I hope and I think that the investigation has answered uh, a number of important questions um, in particular for the families of those who have uh, lost loved ones at this event, but I, I'm sure, in fact, I, I know it hasn't answered all of their questions, nor anybody else's. Um, and that's always a, a big ask anyway, but we, we've done the very best we can in trying to establish many of the facts and, and details uh, that would move this investigation forward. Um, it has drawn attention to some important areas and some important points and some issues. Um, I very much hope that the, the fire service, um, Warwickshire Fire and Rescue, and the fire service generally uh, will take on board some of the lessons learned, uh, I think, from this tragic event uh, and reflect upon those um, and hopefully uh, act upon those. We have um, identified throughout the investigation, as we undertook to do, uh, any safety critical issues or issues that we, or in our liaison with the fire service, um, thought were safety critical we undertook to flag those up uh, as a matter of urgency, which we've done. So we've fed back to the fire service anything that we felt um, would assist in future and avoid a repeat of this tragedy. Uh, I promised very early on um, a thorough investigation and that we would do the very best we could, and I think that's what we have done. Um, it's been uh, a long and protracted investigation, uh, and I think, again, that reflects uh, our intention uh, uh, at the outset. and. Um, and the complexity that, that, has, uh, that has evolved. Um, and we've certainly done our best to determine um, why Ashley, um, Darren, Ian and, and John lost their lives. And uh, that has been a major part of our, of our intention. Um, investigating to the extent that we did, uh, I believe was correct. Uh, I believe it was appropriate and proportionate. Um, and I think it has been justified in so far as uh, three people uh, have um, stood trial um, and I think that uh, that is a reflection uh, on the extent and the detail of the investigation. I also think that, um, um, I mean the judges agreed on at least two occasions that there was a case to answer and I think that's important and that again is, um, explains and, and perhaps reflects um, the investigation itself. One must never forget um, that, that four people uh, lost their lives in this event. Uh, I think that um, not for anybody close to or concerned with or as part of the investigation by any means, but I think that is a fact that sometimes is not necessarily forgotten but is overlooked uh, and I think that must never be. Um, I believe those deaths were unnecessary. Um, and certainly we do not want any more firefighters or anybody else um, to be lost uh, in similar circumstances. As you know, the County Council, Warwickshire County Council, have already pleaded guilty to uh, a very serious health and safety offence in relation to the events that took place and the, and the resulting consequences of, of that night. Clearly things did not go as they should have done. Um, whatever views are expressed and whatever evidence is, um, is presented, I think that, that is a fact uh, which must be acknowledged, as is the fact that serious lessons, I think, must be learned um, from what did happen. Um, there is no necessary accurate or foolproof planning or training that can account for every single eventuality. We all know that, particularly in a, uh, an emergency services scenario. And there are always lessons to be learned, and I think there have been some significant ones here, really. 
uh, and I think that the fire service must first of all acknowledge and then uh, learn from those and that's what I would like to see from that. The cost of the investigation we have published in the past, the total cost is in the region of £4.6 million, pounds, um, which is a lot of money, but I think a thorough um, and protracted investigation is always likely to, uh, to incur significant cost. The cost locally has not been uh, anything like the, that total um, because almost three and a half million pounds uh, was returned to Warwickshire as part of a government grant for the purpose. During the course of the investigation, we interviewed around 800 people, um, including uh, people who spoke up to nine, 10, 11 languages. And we had to use interpreters um, to communicate with them. Uh, and that adds further complications and further cost into, uh, into the investigation. It's fair to say, I think, that the major part of the cost was in the earlier part of the investigation, in the first six or eight months where we um, had to conduct a forensic search and recovery of the building itself to try and identify and establish any evidence and indications of what happened there. And certainly that a good proportion of the cost uh, was incurred around that time. Um, we did engage a number of experts. Uh, I know you've heard um, from the trial, you've heard certainly one prosecution expert, but experts have been engaged in different fields for different purposes, um, not least of which to help us understand uh, fire behaviour and understand um, fire service operational management because it would be something that initially was alien to us. But it, we really needed to understand that to, to, uh, to put any value or otherwise on, on evidence that we recovered. To that end, uh, I focused on four main areas really. Um, one of which was instant command, uh, one of which was risk assessment, uh, breathing apparatus procedures was another, and training was the fourth. And those were the four areas that we, we did need some expert input and we did need to learn. We also engaged um, experts on computer uh, regeneration of the of the building which I know you've seen as part of the court uh, evidence um, that was uh, a significant piece of work but has proven invaluable to assist our understanding to help us when we're interviewing witnesses um, and for people to um, understand better and more accurately the building itself our findings uh, as you know were presented to the Crown Prosecution Service and the evidence that we uh, accrued over that period of time and decisions around uh, the value of that evidence and uh, decisions to charge obviously were that of the Crown Prosecution Service. There were two uh, quite distinct strands to, to this investigation. Um, one was <coughs> how did the fire start and the cause of the fire? And the second, and I'll explain why, I believe was distinct from that. And that was what caused the deaths of the firefighters. It is not a simple case of, well, there was a fire, four people lost their lives, so that was the cause. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple. The reason I would say it's not that simple is that there was a fire, we know that. Um, a thorough investigation was conducted into the cause of that fire as to how it started. And that was involving um, fire officers and fire personnel from different brigades who worked together with us as a fire investigation team and added their expertise and their abilities in to that process. Um, the outcome of that was that, and most, mostly because of the lack of evidence from uh, employees within the building who were able to give us uh, any, any clues from that perspective, and also lack of our ability to recover anything from what was a severely damaged building at the end of it. Um, a significant proportion of the building was damaged, seriously damaged. Um, we explored and they explored uh, every thinkable or possible cause for that fire. And because of the reasons that I've outlined, it was not possible to come up with a definitive reason as to how or why that fire started. Um, the conclusion was that it was probably deliberately started. And that's based largely upon the process of elimination. The fact that we think we eliminated any electrical fault we eliminated uh, any work that was ongoing in the building or anything like that. So, that. so all the possible causes that you may imagine, and the fire service with their expertise may imagine, 
um, we couldn't find evidence to support. So we concluded at the end of it that it was most probably arson, but uh, certainly we don't have any conclusive evidence to, to support that. However, um, the fire was started, the building was burning. Um, you've heard evidence in court uh, from Mr. Tenney as to how he discovered the fire, thought at one point that he'd put it out, returned, and it was burning at a quite significant rate with flames up uh, and, and coming off the ceiling to an extent where he felt he could no longer tackle it and needed the fire brigade. The fire brigade were called, they attended. They were told and it was made perfectly clear to them that there was nobody in the building and the building was empty and had been confirmed. So there, I would suggest, starts the second element of the investigation. Yes, we investigated the cause of the fire, um, but we also then need to investigate why firefighters were deployed into that building in the circumstances that existed and for that reason um, were there any direct links to the cause of the deaths of the four firefighters. In other words, was it fire service operations and decisions um, or was it the person who lit the fire, if in fact there was one. So I hope I've explained that distinction um, <coughs> and you may want to come back to me with some, some questions in a moment on that. Um, but the four men who died, died because they were sent into a burning building. That was why they died, because had they not been sent in, then of course they wouldn't have, not in those circumstances. And that, really, in simple terms, um, I guess with the evidence that supports that is, is why there was a prosecution. Um, <coughs> our relationship with the fire service has always been professional and has always been good. Um, certainly from our perspective, I would like to think that that will continue. Um, we need to work together as, a, as an emergency service uh, and inevitably our paths cross frequently. Um, so I trust that a professional relationship will continue. It's our job, the police's job, to investigate serious matters of crime or allegations or suspicions of serious crime. There is no more serious crime than uh, a crime that results in the death of a person or persons. So it's a, it, it's an, a very serious matter which, which we took very seriously and we investigated as such. Um, and finally, I would, I would just like to finish my statement by saying um, that I would sincerely like to pay tribute um, to the families of, of Darren, um, of Ashley, of Ian and, and John, who have been through uh, an extremely difficult and traumatic uh, experience that has gone on now for four and a half years. Um, they haven't got over it, and I don't think ever will get over it. Uh, I think it's been that kind of experience. Um, but I respect and admire their courage and the way they've handled it. Uh, and I think that is credit to all of them. It's a very, very difficult uh, time for them. And this trial, of course, um, is also incredibly difficult for them to bear. So I offer them my best wishes um, once the trial is now concluded 